Morristown Green, a central park echoing with the footfalls of Washington and his compatriots during the Revolutionary War, is not merely a serene escape, but a living testament to the town's pivotal role in shaping our nation. Morristown's history seamlessly intertwines with every individual who grew up there, creating a childhood rich in the echoes of the past and a vibrant spirit of community carried forward by each successive generation. These are their stories. This is Beyond the Green. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Beyond the Green, where we talk about the people and places of Morristown. My name is Peter, Morristown High School class of 1990, and you are? And I'm Satiri, or Terry, Morristown High School class of 1987. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode. Today is part of our community outreach programs that we'll be providing to the community. And we are honored today to have Lisa and Jamie from the Morristown chapter of Meals on Wheels. Thank you. Thanks Thanks for having having us. us. So, guys, let's start just what exactly is Meals on Wheels and what exactly and what kind of service does it provide to the community? Uh, as many don't know, you've been in the community now for over 50 years. Yes. So Marstown Meals on Wheels is a local chapter of the overall Meals on Wheels, which a lot of people I'm sure are very familiar with. And so what makes us different or what sets us apart is that we provide meals to a very specific subset of town. So we do Mars Town, Mars Township, and Mars Plains. So we actually only serve those three towns as part of our organization, which helps us really connect and know our clients and really know their needs in the community and develop relationships with them. And so uh, our program, we do Monday through Friday, and all of our meals are made at the Atlantic Rehabilitation Institute. So that's in Geralda Farms in Madison. And it's part of Atlantic Health. And so we partner with Atlantic Health to make all of the meals for each of our clients. And I'll say like the biggest differentiator from our perspective that we like to tell our clients or people who are looking into getting our meal service is that we can meet any doctor prescribed dietary restriction that any client has. So we have a lot of our clients are in the elderly population. And so there are a lot of dietary specific restrictions that they have. So we are able because we partner with Atlantic Health to make a meal to any um, restriction that they have. We also can do by preference as well. So Sometimes we have picky eaters, and so we're able to really be able to get them the nutritious food that they like as well as what they need from a dietary perspective. And so it's really been beneficial to the community to be able to provide that service. Excellent. Now, this is going to sound like a stupid question, but is there an actual, like, a menu of some sort? Is there, like, how does that work? Is it just kind of what you guys are serving for the week. Is that how, like, can you explain to people how that exactly that works? Yes, it's my day to day. (laughs) um, So I can definitely explain how that works. So I'll cook the food. I can tell you that I am responsible for. So uh, I guess we probably should have also mentioned. So I'm on the board as well as Jamie. Jamie is the new president of uh, our board and I'm the vice president but I also have the hat of being the volunteer coordinator. So all of our drivers, which I'm sure we'll get to as well, but then all of our new client and existing client setup, I do all of that. So whenever I talk to a new client or a new family, because sometimes it's the family or a social worker from the hospital that's calling, I go through, you know, any allergies, any dietary restrictions, and then we'll get into the nitty gritty, you know, they only like carrots as a vegetable. They only want apple juice because they can't have acidic beverages. So we, a lot of people (laughs) don't like fish apparently. Um, So we go through with them very detailed, um, prescriptive. So there's not technically a set menu, but we have for each individual client, we have their preferences. Mm -hmm. And then based on what the rehabilitation 
Institute is making for that day for the whole um, Institute, mm -hmm. they'll tailor what the meal is for our clients. Excellent. So there's not a menu per se, because we get that question a lot. Mm -hmm. But we do have, you know, people who will say, you know, the baked chicken was really dry and I don't want that anymore. Can I not have baked chicken? Or I love, I love the barbecue yes, chicken. Yes. <laughs> so can I have that every day? Mm -hmm. So um, so we do find that most people enjoy enjoy the meals. Right, right. So do you do you so I assume that Geralda is basically a large commissary? So they have their it's um it used to be on mount kimball mm -hmm. road the right. um on 202 they used to have their facility there and so they've moved and so it's actually an inpatient facility okay and then we um have worked with them and they now create uh special Pardon. boxes for us ever since covid so it's like all the food is prepared and put into a box and sealed so that when we're transporting it you know there's no uh, risk of any contamination mm -hmm. So and, and currently, we're what, what do oh, you, sorry, go ahead. So give, it, give us some statistic. What, what, no, just one quick question, just out of sheer curiosity. What kind of numbers are we talking about here? How many how many meals do you guys crank out, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly and so forth on average? So we do and I should probably actually I have the number in my head because I just did the reconciliation <laughs> because we um, obviously we get billed from Atlantic Rehab. Mm -hmm. So we do a reconciliation every month to make sure everyone's aligned, but we have usually 30 to 40 clients in a given month because we do have some clients coming in, some clients, mm -hmm. you know, taking a break or, you know, they might be away. For be away. So I'd say between 30 and 40. And then um, the last meal count that we did for June, we did 600 meals. Okay. So um, we do Monday through Friday, but it's up to the client if they would like to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, all five days. So we have the flexibility. And I think that's what we hear a lot as a really beneficial um, thing for our clients is that we're flexible with them. You know, they don't have to do five days. They can do a couple days. They could do one day. So not every client is the same, um, which does take a lot of managing, but they are all awesome and they all call a lot, whether <laughs> to complain or to compliment. Um, but yeah, we do about like 600 meals a month. Okay. So I read that it's what, $7 and 25 cents a meal, something like that. What's the cost per meal? So yeah, we offer two meal options. So we have, um, I'll say the all-inclusive, which is a hot meal. So like a hot protein, hot starch, hot vegetable, soup, um, a salad, a dessert, a juice, a coffee and tea. That is $7. And a sandwich, like, a, you know, a turkey sandwich, a salad sandwich. That's $7.25 okay. a, a meal. And then we offer like, um, just a hot, like a light option, which is just the hot meal. So it just doesn't have the sandwich or the dessert. Mm -hmm. And that's $5. Okay. A meal. So basically you're talking about 20 meals a month. If you do the whole month, more or less, if you're talking about Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. So it's anywhere between what well, 100 to about $150 a month, a person, if they decide to do this. So yeah, yeah. currently as we stand, so are your clients then are they directly billed how's that work <laughs> yes so we directly bill either the client or a family member or sometimes there's a a sub that some of our lower income families have set up so it depends on each client, but when we set them up, we are very, um, you know, specific about where they want their invoices sent to. Uh, most, I would say, they just receive the invoices at their house, but we have some that, you know, the daughter wants to pay for it and she lives in California. So we'll email them the invoice um, or different, you know, family services that might pay for the meals. We will bill them directly. And, and that's actually a lead into why we want to do the 
the event that we're you know wanting to talk to you about yeah. because the processing of the invoices, the processing of the bills, the following up with the bills, like that whole process has taken quite a bit of resourcing. And so between the daily operations that Lisa manages and customizes to honestly give such signature service and it's so personalized, we know our clients' mm -hmm. stories, we know their families, we know their neighbors to keep that up and then run the business from the financial side. Um, it really helps to um, have the community support. And so when we went and researched other Meals on Wheels mm -hmm. and we figured out what differentiates, one of the things is, is that our clients are paying for it, where some clients, some Meals on Wheels, it's um, subsidized by the town. Got it. So okay. we thought that we would take some effort to create a fundraiser sure. and just see what we can do to at least help alleviate some of the bill processing for our loyal um, clients, mm -hmm. those who have been with us for years. Um, because even if they can afford it, it's not a matter of them not being able to afford it. It would be easier to take in their contribution as a donation yep. versus a billing process. Got it. Got and it. so it's a whole different process that way. So yeah. we're hoping we can we can do the fundraiser and yeah. Um, subsidize. Yeah, before we touch on the fundraiser, I just have one more question for the two of you. How did you guys, what what initiated you guys? How did you guys join this organization? What motivated you? Was it something uh, that you kind of stumbled upon or is there a little bit more history to it? Um, yeah. Go yeah. <laughs> so one of the other board members, um, Marcel, she has been involved for a few years and um the other leaders of the board who have been with the organization at least 10 years were um, aging and wanting to move on with their retirement okay. and, and their own families. And they weren't sure how they were going to sustain the efforts because it, it is kind of a heavy load, daily, weekly, monthly heavy load. Mm -hmm. um, so they were thinking they may have to set the program. And they were talking about, should we let our clients know, give them a few months of you know, to process it. Mm -hmm. And Marcel um, single-handedly like, went out and just started recruiting from friends of friends. Okay. And like, do you know anybody? And we were both, I think she, you I'll actually know. Mine, yeah. yeah. So for me, I'm a friend of a friend and I was taking a break from my career um, in corporate. And um, I like to go back and I have some volunteer um posts that I make, you know, with my local church and other areas. And a friend said, oh, I'm sure she would help out at least in the interim. And so that was a little over a year ago. And um, it's just been an awesome experience with other ladies who are taking career breaks. And, uh, you know, we found a good rhythm, but that's my story. I got recruited in and um, have really fallen in love with the organization and the clients. And then Lisa can tell you hers. So mine's slightly different, um, a little similar, but so um, my, I was in corporate, so we're both mm -hmm. legacy corporate. Um, <laughs> Survivor. Survivor. Yes, Survivors. I was in corporate finance and uh, I'll say my daughter got really sick. She was diagnosed with epilepsy. Mm -hmm. We spent lots of time in the hospitals, Marstown Memorial, others, et cetera. And I took a leave from work and was still trying to figure out what I wanted to do on my leave because a lot of my time was dedicated to my daughter who was very sick, but I felt like I wanted to do more um, mm -hmm. in the community. And I'll say that I wanted to volunteer and I didn't want to volunteer for the illness that she has because it was too raw sure. at the time. It was just a little too close. Mm -hmm. um, and so on Facebook one day, Mars Plains Moms Facebook group. Uh, this woman posted, does anyone have five to 10 hours a week that they can help my mom with meals on wheels? And I love to cook now, granted, I don't cook any of the meals, but still in like yeah. the realm of food, I got excited and said, you know what? Yeah, I can help out. And what I found was the woman who was asking me to help her mother had been doing what I do for 40 years and her and her husband, I'll say, single-handedly were almost running the entire organization for 40 years and to hear their stories and to hear, you know, what it started from a church run organization and through the American Red Cross. And then they were doing it on their own. 
and just hearing uh, their children talk about, you know, all the voice messages that mom would take and call back. And it was just such an interesting story. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, Carol couldn't take on her role anymore. And so they really were looking for someone to take it over. Yeah. So I remember in the beginning saying like, I might go back to work. I might go back to work. Like, I don't know if I can do this forever, but like, I want to help. And I started helping and I took over for her role. I never did go back to work. So hence the, we're both on career pauses or breaks or whatever we're calling it. And it just started kind of snowballing mm -hmm. into me taking on more responsibility. And it was amazing. It's, yeah. it's so fulfilling. I mean, some of the calls I get that, you know, you know, Lisa, my soup was cold today. You know, some of those calls are not maybe as fulfilling, sure. but I'll tell you, you know, when you get someone that crowds to you on the phone about how they just started and they lost 20 pounds in two months because they're no longer eating processed mm -hmm. foods and they're getting healthy, nutritious meals every day. And the family members calling about, you know, again, how thankful they are for our services, it makes it all worthwhile. Yeah. So it really is truly an amazing uh, organization. That's excellent. Excellent. So now let's roll into the fundraiser now. So the fundraiser is going to be um, July 22nd, Monday uh, at 1770. July 22nd. Right. At 1776. July. July, July 22nd. 20 yes. July. Yeah. Uh, at, at 1776. Yeah. David Burke, 1776. Correct? That's correct. So why don't you talk a little bit about that? Yes. What is, so yeah. first, where can people sign up for the fundraiser? Is it something they should buy tickets for beforehand? Yes. You can go to 1776 website and you can find the link for their events. Mm -hmm. And we should be the first event that pops up and you can buy a ticket there. Okay. We'll have like light hors d'oeuvres and there's a, a drink, you know, open bar. And then we're going to have a couple of our clients there who can actually talk and give their testimony. Um, there's going to be a, an, a local artist, um, Patty Kaufman, who will be there with a piece that she has dedicated to um, our organization called Peace of Mind, which mm -hmm. is what a lot of the children of our clients tend to use that terminology. Like it gives me peace of mind knowing my parents are able to have nutritious meals. Yeah. Um, we're going to have other local businesses. Regalos will be there with some bracelets. So we're trying to make an event that not only educates the community that we exist as we originally started um, when Lisa was speaking in the beginning, but really to give them an understanding of how much it's appreciated by the clients and the client's families. So we're all connected. Um, the, the separation between one person and another and Meals on Wheels is probably no more than seven degrees, right? You know somebody who knows somebody who's probably got someone who wants to you know, either be involved or um, whether it be volunteer or have the meals delivered. So the event will be on Monday, July 22nd from six to eight. Um, our goal is to, as I was mentioning before, see if we can get the community support so that we can subsidize some of the meals sure. for our um, our clients. Because while many of them are able to pay, we do at times have individuals that need the meals but can't afford it. Yeah. And so we do have enough funds at times to make those decisions as a board. We go through like who needs what. Um, we just thought it would be a great way to go forward into 2025 with the understanding and, and the expectation of our clients that this is a community funded organization and we would continue to fundraise so that we could always go forward subsidizing. Got it. Got it. Now, do you guys have a... That's the goal. That's the goal. Well, do you guys have a, a, a monetary goal in mind and how much you'd like to raise? <laughs> <laughs> I did have a monetary goal that I think was a little lofty. Um, Let's put it out there. Because I think originally, Dream yes, Dream I really wanted to raise $15,000. Okay. Like that was my goal was like, okay. I really want to raise $15,000. Um, it's not going to cover like what we want to do in full. Mm -hmm. Like we would love to subsidize a whole year for our Excellent. clients. Like okay. that would be amazing. But we then like, well, maybe we should start with like, you know, maybe like a few months a year or like six months or yeah. three like months. The like or... throughout the holidays, help the clients, sure. you know, throughout their holidays. But I think we, we guesstimate 
we estimated. We estimated that it would take about 40,000 for the current clients that we have for a full year of subsidi subsidizing them. Um, and we would take it one year at a time. Sure. But we have just gotten involved with 1776 Connects mm -hmm. because um, in the fall of last year, I attended a, um, a happy hour that um, I was able to meet up with the Morristown mayor mm -hmm. and we were able to invite him and uh, as well as Morris Plains, I believe, um, to our 50th our celebration that we had um, to honor Carol and the other board members who were um, exiting the board while we introduced ourselves to the volunteers mm -hmm. and the other people who were attending this celebration as the new board member. So in fall of last year, we started sort of bringing the end to one chapter of Meals on Wheels and starting a new chapter this year. And so with that being said, this year has been about elevating our processing mm -hmm. and elevating our services. So something as simple as today's world, like having a Venmo QR code sure. or, um, you know, having a card table set up at local schools where people want to give or support charities or um, sponsoring a little league team. Mm -hmm. like, like these are ways that we're getting out there that allow us to bring awareness, but then bring someone's heart into the community mm -hmm. and say, this is a quick, easy way to fundraise. So the event itself, 15,000 would be the goal, but overall our fundraising efforts, sure. which were never done before. This is the first time. I was going to say, it. this is, you know, when Jamie talks about the fact that we had a board that was on for a long time and wanted to actually sunset the, you know, the organization and us to come in, we were really just first learning like what goes on every day and how do we do the and how do we run day to day and things like that. And now this year we have the opportunity to actually think more outside the box of maybe what could we do. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, this year was the first year that we uh, sponsored. Um, they changed it to the Marstown Area Little League, mm -hmm. but that Marstown, Mars Plains and Mars Township all joined this past year to join one Little League. And so we actually sponsored a team. So like, we actually had a team called Meals on Wheels, which was awesome. And we went to their games and we they did. were five and they were Loved so it. cute and so fun to watch. And it was just, again, another way like we, you know, got our banner out in the outfield. That stuff was never done. And now I feel like we're finally being able to touch the community to say, like, listen, we want to be part of the community, just like we want you to be part of our community and support because all of these people are your neighbors. I yeah. mean, I have three people in my development who actually received the meals. I never knew until I started. Yeah. And I have two people and Marcel has some. And so once we get start becoming subs or, and delivering the meals with our volunteers, um, we started realizing like, there's a lot of people who know people who are getting this mm -hmm. and it doesn't need to, you don't need to wait. It's not a chance. You don't need to wait until you're, you know, deathly ill. It can just be simply a convenience. It could be a way to um, manage their budget. They're on fixed incomes. Sure. You get a lot of food for seven twenty-five. So a lot of them will. They only eat sometimes one meal a day, and they use the sandwich and the soup for the next day for lunch. And so they tell you their whole story and you know what medication they're on. Yes, <laughs> so, I'm just gonna say it's it's not only deliver like the meals to them. It's that we provide a comfort and a check a check-in and an actual human, um, human interaction because yeah. there are so many of our clients that their family doesn't live close or they don't see their family every day. And so we are that touch point with them to really check in, you know, Joan, how you doing? Like, I see you got a lot of leaves out here. Do you want, and sometimes our volunteers will offer to do some yeah, daily tasks leaves. for them. They shovel their, their steps in the winter time. And, you know, it's a real community bonding effort. Like, and I think those are the small town heroes that don't get, you know, the, the credit, but our volunteers are incredible and amazing. And like Lisa was saying before, we're fully integrated into their family now because we're in contact with their children yeah. we're able to let them know like hey they're doing well or you know if they seemed a little off today or you know if they're if their mood if their mood is down you know we 
kind of keep a pulse on that. Mm -hmm. And that's the peace of mind that I think an organization like this provides to a community. Yeah. It sounds like even if you guys are the, let's say the second generation of this, that this organization seems to be in good hands right now. So let me just, let's put this out there. If, oh, thank you. Oh, you're quite welcome. <laughs> let's say somebody wants to donate but can't come to the to um, 1776 next week. How do they go about donating? So we have three ways that you can donate. <laughs> okay. And we... Uh, our, our, your donation is tax deductible. So we have a Venmo, um, which is at, we can, and maybe we can put all the handles on the message yeah, part yeah. of we, we can add the that podcast. To the bottom of the um, but we we'll add everything. Venmo. Mm -hmm. okay. You have okay. So we have a Venmo account. Mm -hmm. We have a PayPal account. Okay. And also just like traditional, we have our website, website has a donate button. And so you can donate there and it's, um, enter you card. enter your, or Apple pay. We accept Apple pay on the website yeah. and everything again is, um, tax deductible yeah. donation. Now, did I read somewhere? I think when I went through your website, did I see that correctly? You can uh, adopt the senior. Yeah, so that's the that's the verbiage that I, th I, I think we're using adopt a neighbor because it can be a senior, but basically okay. trying to give people an understanding of what it takes to pay for one day of meals versus one week of meals, okay. a month, a season or a year. So depending on your donation amount, we are, you know, looking at it like what does it take to adopt a senior? So especially we get phone calls a lot for like, how can I help or how can I contribute? And like for volunteering with us, there's a process for that as well. We, we want to make sure people are background checked. Yeah. We want to make sure you're reliable. Um, and it's not like you can just come in and do it one day. Like it has to be, it's an operation that she r runs and manages on a daily basis. So sure. to keep the schedule as regular as possible is our goal. And it has to be in the middle of the day. So we're picking up the meals from Geralda Farms at 1030 in the morning and they're being delivered around before um, noon, noon each day. So it's a matter of, um, you know, it allows us to connect with the community, but the adopt a senior, adopt a neighbor is a great kind of like hook for people, especially like local Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts. If they fundraise, then they can say they've, they raised uh, funds and helped to adopt one of their neighbors for a month or a year. So that's sometimes a way that people can feel connected to the community. Yeah. Excellent. And the same thing goes for volunteers. If people want to volunteer, they, all that information is available on your website, correct? Yes. yes. And I can also give you our phone number as well to put on there, because sure. which is also on the website. But I would say, you know, we either get a lot of people who email us or they call and just they want to talk through the process. It's a very simple application. We do a interview as well with that individual just to go through what the requirements would be. And then we do, as Jamie mentioned, a background check. Every volunteer has to be a very clean background check because they are dealing with a very, um, you know, vulnerable. vulnerable population. And so we do all of that and then we would actually train them to take them on a route. So we okay. take them okay. and do a route with them so that they can understand exactly what's required. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, obviously we have Monday through Friday. We have four different routes right now. So we have, you know, Monday, Route A, Route B, Route C, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So we have about 20 people that we have volunteer every week. And so, yeah, you know, summer's coming up or some, we're in summer, yeah. right? And so we have a lot of summer vacations that we're trying to manage and get people to substitute. So I'd say we have about 40 volunteers in total. Like if I look at our entire volunteer population um, and then 20 that are really required week to week. Got it. Got it. Excellent. So just to remind everybody, this event will be July 22nd, 6 to 8 p.m., at 1770 at David Burke 1776 tickets can be bought on the 1776 website um anything else that we missed ladies
I would just say the event should, you know, it should be an awesome time. I think, okay. you know, for everyone who's been to 1776 and they have the top suites, I mean, all the bays will be open for people to do dodgeball, oh, yeah. golf, any type of simulated activity they want. All the bays will be open okay. for people to enjoy that for two hours. Jamie will have food. We'll have an open bar. We will have some silent auction type of things okay. um, available as well. Only a couple because we're this is our first one. Um, and then we will have dessert provided by Verley's at the end of the night for our um for take our takeaway gift for people, Christy is nicely yep. donating those nice. to us. So nice. we just want to shout and, her out as well. Yeah, our hope is really our hope is to get the the community um, businesses, like leaders from within the businesses, to come out and really understand how they can contribute. Because giving time um, is sometimes difficult for businesses to do. They have their own businesses to run and, and their employees. But to give their funds to to be a sponsor, we're really excited to see where we can take this so that we can actually help market the businesses that are supporting the organizations, um, such as our nonprofit, Morristown Meals on Wheels, to then support the community. So we're hoping it's one of those like com um, events that kind of brings the community together and keeps the wheels turning, no pun intended on that one. No. <laughs> Well, excellent, ladies. Uh, once again, I just want to let you know if you guys ever need uh, anybody else to be your communication platform, we're more than help, more than happy to help you guys out on this. Uh, thank you so thank much. You so thank much. you for having. Uh, you're quite welcome. Uh, so for Beyond the Green, I'm Peter. This is Terry down here. Jamie and Lisa from Meals on Wheels. Event, once again, next Monday, July 22nd, 6 to 8 at 1776. We hope to see all of you there. Ladies, again, thank you, and good luck with the fundraiser. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. you so much thank for you. having us. No, it's our pleasure. Thank you.